Coach is on the johnsonrvcenter.com hotline. Welcome in, Coach. How are you? Uh, I'm doing okay, guys. Uh, I hear that Lance didn't make it. Didn't make it where? Uh, in the pick. No, no. he didn't. He's, he's got to travel. First time uh, since you've been on our show with us that he's a loser. Yeah. Yeah, I don't ever expect him to lose at all, but uh, you never know about this basketball. You know, I had six teams in the NCAA, in going to the NCAA tournament after a great year according to all the people that broadcast on the SEC network, and uh, every one of them played a double-digit C team, but that doesn't always mean anything. They're a team that's, that's not very good, uh, supposedly, and uh, only had one team get to the Final 16. So uh, when the NCAA tournament started, it certainly was a not a very good NCAA tournament for the SEC, uh, ACC because of, of Duke and North Carolina doing so well, did probably as, as good as anybody so and that was my problem wimp as i went sec yeah. heavy i had auburn yeah. tennessee and kentucky going to the final four yeah you just you listen to jimmy dykes too much that's right yeah, yeah. i mean that, that really is my my, my go-to yeah yeah he'll wear, he'll, wear, he'll wear you out about nothing yeah, but, but you're not a big Jimmy Dykes fan. Well, but you tell me you thought are he, you did you think the sec um, was going to be that bad though wimp uh in in, in the tournament yeah no, no i didn't okay I like Jimmy Dykes fine. I got no problem with Jimmy Dykes. Hey, I will say he used to coach the uh, Arkansas women's team. I went four for four in the in the women's bracket on my final four picks. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. Yeah. He, he, he Such a him. tough sport to predict, Wimp. Yeah, did he, did he help you? No, he help no. <laughs> no. Jimmy Dykes did not help Lance on that. Lance did that <laughs> no, all he got, time. he got fired after no time. I didn't know you um, did not like Jimmy Dykes. Uh, I don't have anything, uh, anything against him either. I, don't, I just don't. I just. Uh, I, I don't. I think you can over-explain it to me and tell me how much basketball you know. And the little old lady sitting over there, the uncle sitting over there, doesn't understand what he's talking about. Yeah. Hmm. Hey, it. so uh, a serious question here: Does Bill Self wear a to- toupee? Mm, I don't think so. Oh. Yeah, yeah I don't funny. either. Somebody <laughs> asked me in, at, at dinner last night at a restaurant. Okay. They were like, "I don't think he wears toupee," and I'm like, yeah. "Dunaway's kind of the expert well, on this." Yeah, I think you're wrong on this one, Coach. Well, it's um. Uh, There'll be there'll be uh, after after uh, Kansas and LSU there'll be no more probation, like ever be, in the history of no. It'll be all it'll be all legal. It'll be yeah. uh, legal cheating. Yeah, it's kind of hard to get so. pop for something now. But you're right. Once because, all this yeah, is well, over, well, you have a pro- the problem that you have is, and you know, the NCAA people are trying to get to Congress. Congress, the con- people in Congress, no, no more understand basketball, football, or scholarship limitations or this or transfer portals than a goose yeah. they don't have any idea even how to vote uh, unless people give them some help so i don't know how congress is gonna you know it can as, as jim said on, on our show last time i think uh you know can, you, you can't go against you can't go against the law and the law is that they can do what, what they wish in order to have a kind of football team they can have and there's no doubt that uh texas a&m has already done that so well, I, I will. I, as long as Rick Patino is still coaching, though, I will say let's don't rush to judgment. There won't be something <laughs> yeah. that can be created that he can break That's the rules of. Uh, yeah, he's been he's been the slickest, um, successful, very good basketball coach to get by with all the things he's gotten by with. So. Yeah, uh, I, I wanted to, I wanted to ask you. Uh, about about the future of this this NCAA tournament, though the ratings were tremendous for yeah. this thing. And it does even, I mean, I thought the setting was good. Uh, the sight lines, you know, if you're in the upper deck, I don't understand how you watch a basketball game in the upper deck. We're never going to go back to playing this thing in a basketball arena on that stage. Um, but, but with the way we're doing television now, every game is on. You can watch every game. It's changed a lot from when you started. Did you, yeah. did you ever see it growing into what this has grown into? And is there a is there any part of you that thinks we will change the number? We've gone sixty four to sixty eight. Do you think we'll ever go sixty eight to more teams? I don't think so. I hope not. At one time we were at thirty two. Yeah, thirty two, and then forty. They won them all times. Yeah. Thirty two, and then forty eight. I believe. I don't. I hope. I hope we don't. I don't want everybody to get in. I think sixty four is been a workable number, and the excitement uh, seems to still be there. I, I, I thought. Always, the excitement was there for me all the time. Of course, so I was around people that were excited about the final sixty-eight or final sixty-four, whatever you want to call them. But uh, 
I, I think it'll I think it'll stay as such because it's been very successful this year, and you've had some teams that that are blue bloods that um, you know got all the way to the final four. You could you could you could start the tournament tonight, and you would not have the same final four when, when it was over with. It just just would basketball is that way, and people don't seem to understand it. Kentucky Kentucky blows out uh, both North Carolina and and uh, Kansas in regular season games, and you know how you know. It, People called in. How did that happen? It happens because it's how you play that night. That's right. I mean, you're right. I mean, if we started over again, uh, I probably would still believe Kentucky would be in the Final Four if we started it all over again, 100%. The coach, Wimp Sanderson, is with us each week, and he joins us on the JohnsonRVCenter.com hotline, courtesy of the Rental Works Division of Crane Works, craneworks.com. Under that big dog, just like everything else with Crane Works, you find the Rental Works Division. Coach will tell you more about them in a moment. Um, I I do want to ask you, a lot of people are picking Arkansas as a top five team. Jeff Goodman had them number one overall next year. Do you think the Hogs are the team to beat next season in the SEC? Oh, I think it's just he's doing that based on the three or four uh, five stars. He's recruited well, there's no doubt. Yeah, yeah, I've seen five stars turn into two stars myself. (laughs) Uh, So you never know. I think uh, on paper, as far as having a good recruiting year and people coming in that – uh, that excites you that, um, you know, they'll certainly be in contention to be the best team in the SEC and, and a good team nationally. But uh, just because you're you're good throughout the season, all you have to do is, hey, y'all, one bump and you're out. One bump, one mistake, one one night that you don't shoot it well, one night somebody matches up against you and they're better than you are, you don't, you, you, you lose out. So it's, it's hard to predict. You do that because you're a writer and you like to write things that, people like to read but uh i would i would say i i, I would doubt that they're going to win the national championship next year with young kids i would doubt that uh, we know your disdain for nil but have you sat back and thought about it if it was wimp sanderson 30 years ago and you were building a roster and you had these funds is, is there a way to go about that have you have you thought about like kind of a map on how you yeah. would bring kids in and how you would get them paid and how you funnel that money in oh sure i try to get lumps to help but you have to you, you don't you know, I've never understood. I worked in the Coach Bryant era, and football was smothered us, as you know. And uh, that was the reason I'm so proud of what we were able to do. It smothered us. Uh, I, I had a lot of alums that helped me with the Enos Watleys and the Buck Johnsons and people like that. They went out to see them, and, and, and they helped me. Um, would I do it like that? Yes. I would get uh, If I was going against Gene Bartow, uh, who had the name and I didn't, uh, and we had that legally, because uh, Sonny would get the Auburn people. They love Auburn people, uh, how much they would give. But I would go to the key ones that helped me recruit all these guys, the Reginald Kings, when I, when I was recruiting T.R. Dunn for the other coach. Uh, and Reginald King, you guys are too young to remember those guys. No, I remember uh, Reggie King and T.R. Dunn. Uh, uh, but anyway, um, I, I would do it like that. I would have it organized, and I would have I would do everything I could to, do, to, to legally – uh, get them whatever they needed to stay with because I know that I know the other teams would too, and uh, I would be organized and I'd do a good job with it because recruiting is the is the lifeblood of everything. Now, so, you know, you can get great players and some nights those guys don't play well and you get beat and you're one and done and you're you know you're you're pretty much flustered with your deal. But the biggest thing I have, the biggest problem I have with NILs and transfers, just to put it where you can understand it. I see so many kids now that are not going to have a scholarship at all. They put their name in a transfer portal. Nobody took them, and they don't, and they can't go back to where they were. And there's a hundreds of those kids that are not going to have a scholarship at all. That bothers me to some extent if it had been mine. And the other factor is I, I'm afraid that we're not going to look at high, high school potential players that are really potentially have a chance to be good players because all of our all of our coaches don't transfer portal all the time. Those two things bug me. I'm not. Don't no, no, no. You're right, though. I mean, we're, I mean, uh, we're LSU changes coaches, and they have zero players on their roster right now. Yeah, well, they got, uh, you know, got four coming in from Murray, right? And, uh, so Murray is going to be watered down from a 24, 34 wins there. So I just don't know how it's going to work with it, with the two major sports of basketball and football. I'm not, I don't have any idea exactly how that's going. You know, I, I had hoped y'all that would help baseball. That baseball guys could really get get guys in baseball some money that are not you know it's ridiculous to have eleven scholarships in baseball and all the money that we have 
You have to I split it up and all that. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, I just think it's un- so unfair to those kids. That I've got, you know, the kinfolk's grandkid son is a good pitcher. So it's just, it bothers me to see that. And I had hoped it would help baseball, Lance. I'm not sure that it has. I'm not sure that the baseball people are willing to, you know, to get it going. Can, can, can Justin Thomas win the Masters? He can. If he puts well, um, he was helped in school a little bit by by um, Tiger before Tiger decided he was going to play. Then he quit schooling him. Uh, quit, he quit talking to him about the different. Uh, so JT places. was working with Tiger yep. on, on how to for, how what to play I gather when I putting. gather. Okay. Yeah, for what I gather, he schooled him some on on some of it, and then he decided when he thought he could play, he he decided he would quit that. I think he can. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see. I think the the biggest problem for Tiger will be the second day. I think you're fortunate that you start off in the in the in the mornings and go to the afternoons, rather than start off in the afternoons and go to the mornings. Right. So he can get up and have some treatment yeah. in the morning and yeah, sort of work I, yeah, into the I, afternoon tea yeah. time on round two. I think two. that you play bad after your morning session and you don't have everything where you want it. You hit some balls before you go back to your place and you're rested that way, and then you're ready to go early the next morning. I think the other way is not as good. I think the wetter the water, the wetter the ground is, the harder it is to walk. Um, I think his biggest problem will be the second day as to how he feels on the second day. I'm just guessing. I don't know any of that. I try to look at it and study it a little bit. Uh, anybody can win it. Uh, there's going to be a cut. They're going to cut uh, 50, I believe. I believe they're going to have either going to have forty or fifty left. There are going to be ninety that play, right? And they're going to have the cut. It's either where they're going to have forty left or fifty left. I'm not sure. Forty five so, and ties, right? Uh, something like I'm that. Not sure. Yeah, it's something like that. Yeah. So it should be terrific. But I would say yes. JT has 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 a good chance to anybody else to, you know, to, you have to know the course. It is the course is like. Here's what it's like if you can visualize this. Taking a marble and rolling a glass across a glass top. If you took a marble and rolled it across a glass top, you couldn't hardly stop it. And when you get above the hole there, if they've got it the way they want it, you got to toe put it, or you got bad problems. You got to be very, very careful that your club doesn't carry you above the hole. That you're better off being below the holes. And those are those are big things to think about. All right. So you would like for us to pick six, and you take the field. Is that what yeah. you want? Mm-hmm. All right. You just want to go, uh, we'll just go in order. Fire away. What, what, who do you guys want? <laughs> um, go ahead, John, I'll, I'll, John, John Rom. We've got to take him. Yeah, I was, let me go first. I'll take John Rom. All right, John Rom. Um, I would like Xander Shoffley, Lance. Are you okay with that? Uh, I am fine with that, Brown. Um, I'll, stay, I'll take Shuffler. I mean, everybody's going to take him. Number one in the world, yeah. 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 I will roll back around, and uh, I'll roll the dice on JT. I'll take Justin Thomas. I don't blame you. Um, I will take Dustin Johnson. Ooh, Dustin DJ good. Johnson. He's playing good. He's playing good. I know. He's one there. Uh, fits him well. Um, yeah. I will take Morikawa. All right. Colin Morikawa. There's our six. That's our six. So we've got John Rom, Xander Shoffley, Scotty Scheffler, JT, DJ, and Colin Morikawa. Yeah. You like you like your side or I side? Uh, I like my side better. Yeah, I think I do too. All right, that's the coach, Wimp Sanderson. He joins us each week, courtesy of the Rental Works Division of Crane Works, Coach. Well, I do, and uh, David's done a good job up there, and Crane Works is a great outfit, and if you get on craneworks.com, you can find out everything that you need to know about Crane Works. I got up here the other day and named all the machines, and I was very good at it. I you was, were, uh, fantastic. I was excellent, I thought. So whether you have a at-home project coming up or a corporate uh, construction job you need to check out, Rental Works. Uh, division of Crane Works is the place to go and the thing to do, and you can check out those machines that I that I named, and you'll be very impressed. That's right. That's it. CraneWorks.com. Talk to you guys next week. Thanks. We'll do it. Thank you, Wimp. Love Bye. you. I love you all. Bye. Bye-bye. That's the Coach Wimp Sanderson with us on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. That's such easy money for him every time. 